Listen, if you're frustrated using Blender, trying to make your own 3D model assets for Farming Simulator or even any other game, but when you get inside Blender, you just don't know what to do and stuff looks odd and it's not working for you. I have a solution for you today. Meshi AI reached out to me and they offered a sponsorship to use their software. They even gave me some credits to go on with it. So being a 3D modeler for farm sim independently, I took up the opportunity, obviously, because you guys truly don't know how many hours I've spent in Blender in my lifetime now in the last almost decade here coming on it. But using Meshi AI to create game assets that aren't necessarily important, but I mean, that's a cool looking little statue that you could easily throw in your map or in a placeable. For you guys have been following the channel, you know, I've been working on a map called Isle of Echoes and it's a big island the raging volcano and there's a tribal area this tribe that lives on another little small island i don't have any assets for that but using the free credits i got from meshi ai i was able to spit out some totem poles uh some local tribal people statues of worship even got some teepees for them to live in and the great thing is once i got the models done and the software did all the texturing for me they were easily importable inside of GE, uh, right from Blender, that is. Let's take a peek at some of those right now. Here's some stepping stone altars, tons of different totem pole choices, statues for days, more statues, more statues, more totem poles, and some local indigenous population. Now, let me show you how to take your 3D model from here into Blender, then into Giants Editor. If you're interested in doing this, in the description box below, you will find an affiliate link from meshi.ai invite up to three friends to get an additional month per friend put towards whatever 3d model you want make sure to do me a solid and go check that out now let me walk you through how to use it we're first going to start off with image to 3d now i personally use chat gpt to make me a scary looking shaman guy from there i'm going to feed that into here once it loads up right here it like automatically assigns its name for you your licensing here that explains that we're just going to go creative commons and symmetry is more for like making stuff that is going to be equal on both sides i've just been leaving it to auto and it works pretty good it takes about a minute and cost 10 credits coins whatever those things are let's click generate and wait her out while we're waiting for that to process i'm going to talk a little about what i think it does good and kind of what it struggles with uh, when i asked for an altar what was my prompt design a high quality 3d model of an ancient stone sacrificial altar the structure is symmetrical square platform with four sides step blah 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 it did pretty good i was having some issues and still do with this model is there's there's some holes here and there a hole right there but not too big of a deal it's gonna look funky once you load it up but it did overall really well for just automatically making it but when i very first started using this I wasn't exactly impressed with the results because you guys on my channel know that I love boats. Well, there's something a little bit odd about this boat. And I even had it texture and it like it made it look like a boat, but that's not a very good model at all. And I tried a couple other different like full can it make a car, truck, stuff like that, and it just didn't do well with it. And so thus far in its current technology of version four, probably not to be used for this. Uh, but once we moved on and I kind of got a feel for what it likes to do, here is a Indian head on a pike. That was the prompt I put in. And yeah, pretty blown away. I mean, it's got a little bit of oddities in the back of the head with textures, but pretty close. Pretty good. Now let's look at another prompt where I put tribal Indian leader standing, feather head dress, large tribal dress covering legs. It did pretty well, at least for farm sim standard, right? Not too bad. It did... It, made a couple of them for me some oddities but it's been buying a model i mean technically i guess you'd be buying it after you ran out of credits but it's not too bad of a deal okay let's take a peek at our shaman of flames so when it does this it usually creates four different choices that you have and some of them are a little funky looking like this guy down here look at his nose i don't know what's going on with that uh you know just some typical ai stuff but usually what i've found it two to one out of the four turn out decent if you find one that you enjoy you basically click on it and you'll have the opportunity to select what type of polygon how much definition is going into it i've just been putting medium 
and it seems to do pretty well. You can automatically generate a texture with it. To select this one, you don't really require any coins and it'll refine it. It'll make it look better. It's just allowing you the option right now to choose which one you want. But we're just going to throw a texture on it automatically as well. And I don't think I like any of these other ones. Maybe that guy. Let's take a peek at this one then. Gotta wait for those. Textures take a little bit longer to generate. Next, we're going to check out the text to 3D. So you're basically putting in a word prompt here, less than 500 characters. What I've been doing is just going over to ChatGPT, grabbing a prompt, ask him to make me a prompt. And what I want is tribal decor. I'm just going to take that little bit of a prompt and not use the whole thing you can use the whole thing and add what you want it, i've found that less is less is more sometimes with this and whatever is most important needs to be up at the top and with that being said we're just going to click generate and wait for that bad boy to spit us out some fun time stuff now if your brain is about ready to pop from trying to do prompts or find good images and whatnot you can actually just go to the community page here and join over two million other creators and download any of their work is really awesome if you're making maps and for farm sim and you just need a model for something like some of these are a little bit fantasy but you know you might get lucky here and there making all these assets pretty much game ready to install on my map took about an hour i've been doing this a while so it might take you two for this much 3d models and textures that you have to process but the option is there and down below in the description now one thing i do like because sometimes ai just is weird like what the heck happened there with our shaman meshy ai allows you free retries up to four times per project from what i'm seeing so we're just going to click that to remesh it and look at some of the tribal decor that it made up for us well that one's kind of cool with the we wouldn't really use stuff like that because it has the plants for a farming simulator but it did turn out cool that one's neat let's take a peek at this one because what we're basically doing when we select here is asking it to refine it and make it better detail and clean it up based upon these poly counts and we're going to stick with medium still and click confirm here's some examples of some more text to 3d model i asked it for a tribal thick fence and it gave me these four different options and i honestly like two maybe three of them i like this top left corner one and this bottom right one i think i'll probably grab this guy and have it redefine this a little bit then with this text prompt i asked for a tribal fish drying rack wood sticks and it didn't it didn't do too bad the fish look a little weird this one's usable i think this one probably usable we're gonna click confirm on that and let it re re redefine it now that we got our stick fence here we're gonna talk about texturing this bad boy once you have one re redefined here and you have it up on here you can come right up you either choose to redo it again or apply a texture and texture is going to cost us 10 credits there so i'm just going to press texture and that's going to start burning away we picked this fish one so we're going to do the same thing here and just let it texture it how it feels and there we go there is our stick fence our tribal stick fence it's got its texturing on it now and I mean, it looks pretty good. There's a couple weird spots, right? But for a free 3D model, it's not bad. Let's take a peek at some more of these textures now that they're done rendering. And as we get closer, we can kind of see that this 3D model is a little funky, right? You got a fish just hanging out there in nowhere. You could remotely easily fix that in Blender. But I do love the wood. You know, the, the fish are okay. It did fail on the backside. It, it gave like a wood texture kind of odd you're not always going to find wins with this thing but stuff like this it did fantastic I feel like that's so good for a 3d model like that was killer but uh, i notice it do does better when you lean towards non-realistic things as you can see that kind of has its differences to where it doesn't quite look like a totem pole it looks more like a mud pole i don't know <laughs> but for farming simulator and our purposes you could definitely make some assets relatively quick to put them in game now let's go through the exporting process here once you have your model all done you have your texture you want if you want to go to stylize you can get tbr textures or we're, for the simplicity of this i'm just exporting the main diffuse texture you notice down at the bottom here it'll say download when we do download i usually choose obj you pick your choice i'm not going to resize it at all i'm going to leave it as is and then i'll just click download and it'll prompt me to where i want to save it at now all we're going to do is unzip it that way we can access it from blender and then we're going to open up our blender 
making sure to save your first time in here so you have a save file otherwise exporting with giant editor will be funky come right up to file we're gonna go to import obj and now locate where you saved that file at once you located it just click OK, and it should pop right in. Now, if you want to see if the texture applied, which more than likely it, most of my other ones did automatically, you just go to Material Preview here. So that was holding down Z, and it brings up that radial window. And it looks pretty good. I mean, I don't see anything that I really am going to try to fix right now. I'm going to probably export it as is. Let's make sure it's only 14,000 triangles, so not bad on topology. If you look up at the top left corner, we got it probably could have got it a little smaller but it looks good one thing we definitely need to do is if this is a placeable object and you plan on applying the placeable shader down here where you see these this green data symbol here you're going to want to click on that and it'll have this window this little tab here called uv maps and it should already have a uv map but if you're going to be applying the placeable shader you need to add a second one that way when snow falls snow will fall on the top of that once you got that going, next we need a collision. Now there is a old school way of going there and adding a cube and fitting it just perfectly around it using all the translations and data and stuff. I, I am going to recommend a, a plugin. It's a paid plugin, but I really recommend it. And I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but it'll save you so much time. And it is called Collider Tools. Do a Google search for Collider Tools Blender plugin. And once you're here, you can select your object, go up here to add convex hole, boom, collision instantly made. After we have the collision made, we're going to select the collision and it should already be a child of it. So open up our giants exporter. Once we have that open up, we can go through to the tab that says attributes. Under attributes, you're going to want to find the rigid body tab. From here, select static collision. And under this collision presets, you want to find static object. After you have all that selected, come right down here to the bottom where it says apply. And you'll want to apply that to it. Next thing I like to do is come into rendering. Under rendering, you're going to select non-renderable. That way it is invisible when we load up the game. We're going to click apply again. We're ready to export. So let's come back over to the first tab where it says export. Come right down here where it says output file. Now I have this saved as a tribal set. I, I want to change that. I'm going to leave it in the same folder as all these, all the other ones that I made, but create a different name. Fence. After you've created your file name with both of these objects selected, I just tap double A on it, AA, and select everything in your window right here. Click export selected. You'll see down at the bottom, this is success export time 2.3 seconds. And then we can open that up in Giant's Head. Once we get in here, the texture in most cases won't be applied unless we apply it inside of Blender. But even that's really finicky right now. So I didn't want to include that in the tutorial because if it would have worked, I would have did it this time. But it keeps messing up on me. So we're not going to cover that with Giant's Exporter. Instead, we're going to manually select it. And then over in our material editing panel right here, we're going to find the material section where it says albedo map and click on these three little dots. I'm going to open up this window right here. We're going to do the same thing. Click on these three little dots up here. Now we're going to locate where that folder was with the texture. After you tracked it down, the texture is going to be in a PNG format. Now, luckily for us, Giants Engine does have an auto converting feature for PNGs. I have found that from time to time it doesn't work and we need to be watching our console just in case because go to check it and be like, why didn't that convert? I'm going to click on it and it says there is no optimized version of the selected texture available. Convert now. I'm going to click yes. Once it's successfully done, you'll look down your console and you'll notice that it is operation completed with no errors. We'll click apply and can't really see it that well because it's kind of dark inside the editor. I'm going to come right up to create and just make a light, rotate the light a little bit so I can see a little better here. Yeah, not too bad. One thing we do want to make sure with the textures is over here in the material panel. Again, we're going to come to smoothness and right now it's set at 0.50. We don't want that. We're going to set that to zero and it just flattens out the texture. So it would shouldn't be shiny, right? Now I have this all saved in a completely different other folder than the map that I want to put this in. So what I'm going to do is with the parent selected, the tribal wood here, that also includes the collision that's underneath it. I'm going to select it, go up to export selection with files because we wanted to pull that texture. I'm going to track down my map and export it into there. I'm going to be exporting it into my 
tribal textures inside of my map. I'm gonna make a generic i3D that we're gonna delete later on, put fence. When it asks, do you want to get the parent directory structure? You're gonna put no. You wanna keep relative game paths? Yes. After that's done, we can actually open up that i3D now. So I'll just hit save in case it didn't work right here. Open up fence, go take a peek at it. I'd like to apply the placeable shader now. So over in the material editing panel, I'm gonna come down to here, click shader source, and we are going to locate the placeable shader. In most cases, you're gonna to wanna to track down your Farming Simulator 25 data folder. And in this top folder, you'll see one that says shaders. Inside of shaders, we're looking for place. Once you apply there, if you remembered to do the UV mapping, adding a second map inside Blender, you will not get an error. If you get the error, then you need to go back into Blender and re-import re it back in. But now we have a placeable shader on there, so when it snows, it'll leave snow on all the tips and stuff. I'm gonna click save on it. I got my map open here, and we're gonna import it in here and play around a little bit with some of these assets because I have all these new tribal assets that I haven't had a chance to put them in the map yet. So I'm just gonna come up and import in using the import button. Track down fence, import it in. We didn't have any errors in the console. Got it selected. Let's throw it down here. Probably a little small. I've noticed some of the models were a wee bit small when I was checking them out. So we might actually like bump this up to two and make it a little bigger. But you'll just have to compare it with other stuff on your projects and see what you like. Okay, so I just made up a quick little scene with some bushes and trees and put all the models that I've added in. I am ready to load this up in game for the first time, I might add. And we're going to see what it all looks like in game all rendered out. Here we go. First look. Honestly, they look pretty good. And I have collisions on everything. So might end up changing this collision so you can walk inside of it. But hey, for what we're doing, you know, it serves no actual purpose, but looks good while you're driving your tractor. Yeah, first glance, these guys look okay completely on the flashlight i'm absolutely digging these totem poles i don't know about you guys but these guys turned out really cool same thing with the statues like that quality that's killer that is so cool i couldn't have done that i wish it could do boats you know but it is knocking the statues and the totems this is my first batch not a huge fan of but these other ones turned out really good later on there you go guys you can pretty much flush out a whole scene in your map just using the free credits that you will get by going and checking out Meshi right now using the link in the description below. Special thank you to Meshi for giving me this opportunity to check out their software and probably be a user from here on just for simple stuff. Not too complicated like we were talking about before, not doing boats and stuff, but really good. When you use the link below, I will get some free credits using that affiliate link. But so will you.